Hey everybody, welcome back. Episode 28 of Football Manager, and we are still at Forest Green. It's been a pretty exciting offseason, so this, you know, these transfer specials usually go a little long, so just a heads up. Hope you guys give it a good listen to, but uh, let's kind of go through a lot of what's happened. I have gotten a lot of job calls this offseason. I've passed on them all. We were linked with uh, Red Bull Salzburg. We got interview offers from, oh, let's see. Cardiff uh, approached us again in the off season. Uh, they had hired the coach last year when I passed on the job, fired him, interviewed me, uh, wanted to interview me again. Um, Middlesbrough, I, th I think, is one. Watford. Watford was in the Premier League last year, I believe. Uh, there was somebody from the Premier League that had approached me. Southampton, maybe? Oh, no, no, no. It was Sheffield United. Sheffield United approached us uh, uh, for an interview. Passed on everything. Passed on everything. You know, the first couple of times were kind of difficult just because, you know, I'm more in tune with like a journeyman style save and building your career. Um, once I passed on the first few, it's been easier as I've gotten more acclimated and, and building relationships to the players on our side. So it hadn't been as hard, but it's still been weird, you know, it's still been weird. All right, well, let's take a look at, uh, let's just kind of go through and do kind of a recap first. So there's my profile. Uh, not the greatest coach, but we are developing our mental side, adaptability. I don't know what to do for that. I know Loki and Loki Doki and his journeyman's his adaptability is always real low. We have gotten real good at technical and working with youngsters, so that's developing, attacking, defending. That's gone up. Don't know why I don't work with goalkeepers, but eh, whatever. So that's me. Uh, my current contract, we are signed for two more years on a three-year deal uh, that started last season, 238000 And that was kind of the weird thing because one of those jobs that we actually got offered was over a million dollars a year. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's weird. It's just weird. All right, uh, taking a look at our finances. So we have $6.6 .6 in the bank, mostly thanks to the earnings last year. Uh, we uh, also uh, took out a bank loan for $3.9 million, and we're paying $34,000 back. And if we look in the club vision, there we go. Uh, they came to me, wanted to increase the general manager's salary, which, of course, came about a week after I hired a new general manager. Uh, improved training facilities, that is underway and will be done near the end of the winter transfer break. So that's going on. That'll help us out a lot. We are improving the youth facilities. Those should be done at the same time. And we are expanding the ground. Uh, so that's in place. They're expanding it from 50. That's not the real place. We were, what, 5,100 and we're going to 7,200? Oh, here we go, Plan Stadium. Uh, yeah, so we're at 5,100 right now, something right around there. They're expanding by 2,570 on the seats, so we will have a 7,710 uh, capacity stadium at the new lawn when it is done real close to the end of this season. We'll have about a month that we can move back into it. Now, in the meantime, with our stadium being closed, we've moved about an hour down the road to Swindon, and we'll be playing at the county ground, which is a 15,547 capacity for normal matches. I'm hopeful that we see a crowd increase, but I, our, our uh, where's the information on tickets? Projection. I don't remember. I don't remember how many 
season tickets we had, and I don't even know if there's a place to find that. But anyway, it wasn't it wasn't anywhere near the seating capacity. But what I'm hopeful is we have higher uh, attendance uh, for the bulk of the season in this 12,000 seat stadium. Taking a look at dynamics, still very good team cohesion, which I'm gl glad about. Locker room's very good. Leadership support is excellent. If we take a look at the hierarchy, uh, five players, no real opinion. And for the most part, let's see, one, two, two. Yeah, all five of these guys are guys that are on our U23 squad that have either not been in the first team, in or near the first team, or have been out on loan. So they just haven't uh, developed very much. Uh, Dominic Ball, he was evidently a high influential player, and we did not make him captain uh, because McGinley's our captain. So I wonder if Wharton replaced him and I screwed that up. Maybe, maybe. But uh, he still supports me. So 23 supports, so that's good. And let's jump into the transfers. Oh, yeah, I guess first off, let's take a look at our new general manager, Lee Congerton. Uh, he, uh, Ward, our previous uh, director of football, he retired. He was 71. He was in the director of football role when I started the save. So we had had a lot of success together, and he retired. This guy's a big step up. I want to say Ward had like a like a five negotiation and like a 12-14. So Congerton should be a good fit in this role. I was really able to hire somebody with better ratings. And that's something we're going to have to be looking at. I also just hired a technical director. He has not come on board yet, but I just hired him. And that's so if you're not sure what a technical director is, because it's something new in FM20, the director of football deals with player related stuff. <laughs> the technical director deals with staff related stuff. So sending coaches out for badges, hiring and firing staff. That's what the technical director does. <clears throat> so I wanted to hire somebody there. I would like to get another coach if I could. I wonder if I could request that. Coaches allowed for Forest Green. All right. So that's so we should be able to hire that to five. So I'm just going to throw out a real quick advertisement for a coach there we go all right transfers the business that you're all interested in let's take a look at the history so we've sold out 3.7 million we've spent 1.9 million we have not touched any of the money in the bank so that's good taking a look we've loaned out a couple of our young players Mazid Agungbo goes out on loan again Adam Hutchinson I really think this guy's going to be pretty good. He's only 19. Uh, he's Scottish. I think he's going to be pretty good. Now, he doesn't have natural fitness. He won't be a Premier League guy. Oh, I cannot go to scouting summary, huh? But he's four and a half star potential, uh, currently operating at a League Two, and hopefully, and can be a championship defender in the future he's just so far down the pecking order i can't get him into the squad so we sent him off to exeter liam kitching we finally moved him he had a 3.75 million dollar release clause we've been trying to move him for a couple of seasons now and nobody was anywhere close and i finally said you know what i'm just going to get rid of him he only played in nine matches last year Started five or started four, came on off the bench in five. We sell him to Petersboro for three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. CJ Egan Riley. This is one of those guys we got him from Man City when they did the youth release last year. Got him on a free. Five four and a half five star potential. Really good looking kid. And uh, yeah, five star potential. But just wasn't going to break the starting, you know, wasn't going to be on the first team. Start. I didn't have him listed, but we started getting some offers. 
I tried to make a contract offer to him and he wouldn't, and he, he was, you know, he just priced himself out with me. Uh, so we ended up selling him to Huddersfield for 1.4 million. So that was a new transfer fee record for the club. Cameron Pring goes back out on loan again to Shrewsbury. Josh Marsh, we've had him out on loan for a f- couple of seasons. Again, he wasn't going to sniff the starting 11 or the first team. So we uh, we just bit the bullet on him, moved him on for 74000 And we got him for an undisclosed fee our first year. Uh, made 150000 on him last year in loan fees and then 74000 this year. So we've made some money on him. Uh, Giancomo Risi goes to Pisa for up to $400,000. We got him for two seventy-five, dollars so we made a slight profit uh, when we were back in League One into that season. And he did play, started 11, came off the bench in 11. He wasn't bad, but we've made some moves that just kind of made him expendable. Bright in a Bakari. Uh, of course, I couldn't pronounce his name, so I wanted to get rid of him. No, not really. But again, we made some, we did some business this year that made him expendable. Uh, he goes to Lausanne for 1.4 million, and taking a look, we picked him up on a free. So that's a good bit of business. He was very good for us last year. And Tite, the Brazilian, uh, we signed him for 200,000 two years ago. Uh, he only st- he only played five matches last year, so we took a little hit there. Uh, not the best business, but he goes to Birmingham for one thirty-five. So that's our outgoing business coming in. We bring in Craig Mitchell. He costs us three hundred and fifty thousand dollars from Derry City. Uh, he is that green background. I can't see on that. North, oh, Northern Irish. Okay, I see what it says now. Uh, but two and a half star current, five star potential ability. He's 18 years old, plays on the left wing. Uh, he's really developing with us so far. And he's going to back up Elliot Freer over there. Might challenge him for some playing time. So that was uh, that was our first bit of business. Uh, Odane Henry comes in. Uh, this was a loan move uh, from Liverpool. Uh we got him on a – we ha, you know, scratch that, reverse it. Uh, played for Liverpool, uh, the, the Purple. I, I know we do a lot of loan business with them. But uh, they released him. We picked him up on a free. This was uh, right after the end of the season. And uh, he is a striker, can also play on the right side. Not bad, five-star potential, 18-year-old Jamaican, and just thought he might be some good business. Uh, Kevin Watson, we raid Chelsea for him. This was uh, another one of those young players that was released that we pick up on a free. Uh, he can play the central mid. He can play the defensive mid. He can pass really well. And I, I put a probably this game. And you got if you guys have watched my saves, it was like one of the journeymen's earlier this year. I really started putting a premium on passing in addition to pace and acceleration. Now that we're kind of up in the championship, you want to start seeing a little more well-rounded, but passing is one of those that I, I kind of like everybody to be able to do. And if I've got to choose two guys that are pretty equal, I'm going to take the one that can pass better. He's not the fastest guy, but four and a half star potential, decent first touch, very good distributor. And he can tackle, which is why I think he'll make a pretty decent defensive midfielder for us. And he'll be in that slot. Won't start more of a future role. Uh, Daniel Daniel Postama, he's a Dutch player, 18 years old. We get him from Man City. They uh, Again, one of those players they released. So we uh, pick him up. And he is a goalkeeper, already pretty good. And if we take a look, he's down the list. That's not who I want calling that. That's who I want calling that. Uh, but anyway, there we go, Daniel Posma. So he's going to be uh, one of our new young goalkeepers, and that's going to make Tia and Lubjic probably expendable because Trafford is 
And uh, yeah, just try to cut some more salary. Trafford can, you know, is right there with him. He's English, so that way I've got a homegrown player uh, in our reserve role. Pasta, Postman, and Postma, and Leon Pittman. Then our our youth goalkeepers uh, coming in, uh, you know, in the future. So just, you know, able to just kind of shuffle things around there. Uh, Matteo Gisolfi. Yeah, we picked up another another name that I can't pronounce. We get him on a free. Uh, he comes to us from Criminis in Italy. Siri, uh, they were in Serie C. It looks like they recently got relegated. Uh, but he is a striker. Not, not the greatest, but he's four-star potential. He actually has very good physicals and can do the business. So we pick him up. Uh, Bobby Kamwa, he's a free from Leeds, and I want to say this was another release. Uh, he was on loan at Bolton last year, played 24 matches, one goal, three assists, uh, but they let him go. We pick him up. He's a midfielder, and not bad, not bad. He's going to slot in, and remember, we lost a lot of our midfielders from last year, so we will... Uh, be looking to put some of these players in, into the, you know, in and around the starting side. Joe Morrell was a free. I don't know how or why, but he comes to us from Bristol City. We had him on loan. Was that last year? Two years ago. I forgot about that. <laughs> Didn't play bad. Uh, so, yeah, we had him on loan from Bristol City, but they let him go. We pick him up on a free. And, yeah. I like him. I forgot he was on our side two years ago. But he's really well-rounded, and he is going to fit into that Mazzala role, I believe, because he has good, you know, solid finishing as well. So I think he'll be the starter alongside uh, Harvey White. Taking a look, uh, Terrence Boya comes from Troyes on a free. Uh, Troyes, he went there on a free in France, came up in the uh, Cone or Kane system. You'd think with a French name like mine, I would have some knowledge of how to speak that language, but I don't. Uh, so four, three and a half star potential, left back, slots in there as uh, as depth for us. And that is what made Reese expendable. So that's what got, got us to move him. Kiko comes in on a free He's another midfielder, defensive midfielder. Comes to us from Guimarães in Portugal uh, on a free. So we did a lot of cheap business this year. We spent a little money. We'll get down there in a minute. But uh, Kiko, very good first touch passing. Uh, I, I see him being in that defensive mid role. So that's where he's going to slot. He'll be around the first team. Uh, Brian Mieres comes to us from Chacarita. And he comes on a free as well. He's Argentinian, 26 years old. And he has never been sold. He was out. They picked him up on a free from San Lorenzo. Uh, he is a right back and really, really fits in well there. Now, I kind of picked him up not knowing what we were going to be. You know, I knew we had Nico Williams coming back on loan. That was one we extended in the off, right before the off season, but this is to give us somebody beyond him or to even challenge him. So that was the early business. Leighton Stewart comes to us on a free. He is a 19-year-old English striker, and you know young English strikers can make you a lot of money. Uh, he came up through the Liverpool system, never played for him, had a short loan stint at Falkirk. I think he looks pretty good. Now, he is 5'11", but he has good jumping reach and really good heading. I love his determination. Concentration's a little bit of a concern. We play a pressing forward, so that is a little troubling, but really, he checks a lot of boxes. So, being that he was English, I said, I really want him. Let's get him in. We can, and that's what let uh, Tite go. Uh, for a slight bit of money. Harvey Elliott comes to us on loan from Liverpool. We made an offer for three players from Liverpool. Uh, he's the only one that accepted. The other two went elsewhere. One of them went to an MLS side, and I was like, really? 
but Harvey Elliott is valued at seven million dollars, four star current ability. Uh, he is going to be our starting right winger at inside forward. He is left footed, which we haven't really had, so he is going to play till his legs fall off. Daniel Hart, we paid one point three. Let's save him. Carmine Starantino uh, comes to us from Citadella, 275000 uh, Came up through the Juventus system in Italy. You know, I never could figure out why they call him Zebra in the game. Is that, a, is that a licensing issue? That's the only thing I can figure. But anyway, he is also a right winger. Uh, he is right-footed, but he can play striker. He's got good finishing. Uh, so bringing this guy on and the English striker, that's what let us let Marsh go. Uh, we've also got another guy, I think, out on offer that he may leave here in the next uh, week that we have. But uh, pretty good pretty good stuff out here. So I think he's going to be quality depth for us. Daniel Hart, SV Reed, $1.3 million. He is Austrian, 18 years old. Another winger. Now, he's right only, so I project moving him over to the left side, making him the inside forward over there, and competing against Freer. But this kid is quick. He's got decent first touch. He's got great passing, flair, determination, work rate. Uh, crossing is not the best, but that is what it is. So I want to move him to attacking midfield left, inside forward support. And we'll get him training over there. So if we take a look at our team report here, and we're, we've only got our top squad. So we're looking at uh, Ida up top, Colin Stewart, uh, Starantino. I think Hunter is going to be expendable with uh, Starantino coming on board. The only thing I need to think about is over here. So we've got Elliot Collins. Collins will be a, a, off the bench either place. And I, I can start Stewart if I have to bring Collins to the wing. Nico Williams will not move up, although he can. We do have Shepard Mirrors behind him. Daniel Hart's there. I think we're going to go ahead and try to transfer Hunter. Just, you know, again, maybe make a little money, but then also get that payroll off our list. On the left side, we've got Freer Collins. Uh, Bennett is in uh, off of loan. I think he's good enough to be around the first team. So we'll see. Uh, Mitchell also comes in there. Uh, White, we made an inquiry. So last season, we got the extension for one more year for White. We made an inquiry. He's valued at $8.5 million. I was like, eh, they wanted $84 million for him. So thanks, Tottenham, for helping us out. My goal is to keep an eye on him, try to reloan him every year. Oh, by the way, when does his contract expire? It's up at the end of this year. End of next season, we'll make the offer. So we may get him for two more years now. <laughs> and then his contract will be up. Maybe we can sign him on a free. Uh, Ibu Adams, we made the decision. We, not like I asked for input. I made the decision. He can do the job. He's making a good bit of money. If I had to do it now that I've signed these other guys, probably would not. But he's good third depth at defensive mid. I'm not going to start him in the... Uh, I'm not going to start him here. He's going to be a bench player. Morell's going to be my starting central mid. And then we've got Kamwa uh, in there as well. But Adams gives us, uh, you know, he could play anywhere in that triangle. So that's a good player to have on our bench uh, with, uh, you know, with a short bench. Wharton on the left side, uh, the newcomer Baya there. McGinley can slide over in a pinch. Uh, Wharton, it says, is now the best center back. But he's not going to play there because we have Ross and McGinley back. But it gives us an option there with Baia on the left. Williams, of course, back on the right. Shepard is still here. Uh, Mirez and then Rawson can slide out. 
Talbro's out on loan, so I need to hide loans out. There we go. And then we have uh, Trafford and Palmer. Not sure. Trafford has developed a little bit. Trafford's a better shot stopper. He has no eccentricity. Palmer's a little bit better in the air, communication. Trafford is faster. Palmer is more physical. They're both English. Trafford's only 19, so you know he's got to get better. He's got to get better. Uh, he's four and a half star potential, and Palmer is four star potential. I think I'm going to give, I think I'm going to give Palmer the starts this year. Bring Trafford in for cups and then uh, let them kind of battle it out. But I think Trafford is going to replace him sooner rather than later, probably in maybe next season. And then, of course, we're trying to get rid of Lubzik and T. And, uh, you know, then that gives us uh, one of our new young guys that can play emergency backup. So that is what's going on. If we take a look at the friendlies, we had a 3-1 win over Grimsby. Harvey White with a hat trick. We won on penalties against AGF. This was ironic, right? 2-2 two -two draw. We go to penalties, which if you did not see the season finale for the playoffs last year, go check it out. Penalties decided that game, and we end up winning 5-4 on penalties in this one. The Friendly Cup final was the very next day. I was like, well, it wasn't even on the calendar. So how was I supposed to know that? So we played our starting rotation here against AGF, and we went out against Shakhtar 2-0. Uh, and then uh, just a couple of days later, we actually beat West Brom, which was surprising. West Brom and Stoke were our two moneymaker games this year. We beat Stoke in a friendly, and uh, or Drew went 1-1. Harvey White scored again. We had Harvey Elliott was sent off. They scored an equalizer after the sending off. And then we won our last friendly, which was just the giveaway game, 11-0. Harvey White, another hat trick. Adam Ida, four goals. Uh, Rawson, Collins, and Craig Mitchell uh, with goals as well. Didn't help that they had a player sent off. So we will be back for the season opener with Stoke and the Carabao Cup first round with Coventry next episode. I'm not going to do a match today in the transfer special, just, you know, we're too long already. And that'll probably be how I'll switch that over moving forward. And competition-wise, uh, they want us to reach the second round in the Carabao, which last year it was unimportant, I think. In, uh, the FA Cup, we enter the third round, and they want us to be competitive, and we were knocked out in the final Lost in the final by Shakhtar. So if there's anything else you want to see in here, uh, I guess we could look at records. Modern day. So our highest league position we attained last year, finishing third in the championship. And we are in the 22-23 season. So we had 107 points a couple of years ago. And I guess these these uh, the asterisks are under my... oh. From 19, yeah. So, league wins in a season, 34. That was our promotion year. 19 draws, that was disappointing. 98 goals scored in League 1 that year. Highest attendance, well, that was 5,012 against Sheffield Wednesday. That was a sellout, and we've done that quite a bit. Highest gate receipts, 192,000. Uh, in the FA Cup against Doncaster. 4,942 was our highest average attendance last year. Jeez. Uh, let's see. Highest transfer fee received, the $1.4 million that we got for Egan Riley this year. And total transfer spending, $1.6 million. Aaron Collins had 26 goals in a season. 7.46 average rating by Elliot Freer. Ethan Hill started that game at just under 17 years of age. 
Fastest goal was 13 seconds. That was by Jack Aitchinson against West Brom in the Carabao Cup. My first season. Most assist was by Gronley, uh, 15. That was a couple of years ago. Connor O'Malley, 23 shutouts. Of course, we moved him on. Elliot Freer, 9 Player of the Match awards. The youngest goal scorer was Kai Kennedy at 18 years. Uh, Neil Grayson, that was not ours. 15 matches in a row that were won is a record for the club under me, and six matches in a row with uh, without conceding a goal. Most overall goals, so Collins, 24-26. Adam Ida with 22 last year. And, you know, I think he would have scored more had we been in a lower league. I don't think Collins would have scored 22. In fact, what did Collins score last year? Collins played 36 matches and scored seven goals. And he started 34. So, yeah, his goals were way off at the higher level. But anyway, that's going to do it for the transfer special. We do have another week uh, in the transfer window so we will talk about any transfers that come in at the last minute. We've got a couple of players that you know some teams may be sniffing around for. We may or may not take them, but uh, we will look at that. Well, guys, thanks so much. Let me know what you think of the moves this year. Uh, let's pop back on there real quick. What do you think about the players that we've brought in? Are we going to regret letting anybody go? Uh, and who's going to make the biggest impact? I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's going to be Joe M Morrill. I think he's because I think he's going to start. Could be Daniel Hart, Elliot. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, he's on. He's on. I think Elliot's going to make a huge impact. I'm thinking about our players. I think it'll be Morrell players that we own, but I think the player that we need to look at is going to be Elliot. Where is, let's take a look. Yeah, we usually look at the uh, preview, right? So we are picked to finish 23rd, which is in relegation. So that's not good. We were 55 to 1. We were higher up when I looked a little earlier. So that's, eh. Key players, if we scroll down. So Wilfred Zaha is at Crystal Palace. Seems to be the highest rated player. Yeah, Watford was relegated. No, they were not. It was Palace. Oh, well. I don't remember who the premier. Oh, it was Sheffield United. We already talked about that. All right, so Nico Williams, our highest rated key player. And then I'm thinking the other one has to be Elliot. And do we rate a third? No. So there's our two key players. All right, guys. Well, hit that like button for me. Let me know in the comments what you think about the transfer business. Uh, as I said, are we going to miss anybody? Who's going to make a big impact? Who's going to be the main, you know, a main impact player? Who's going to be our leading scorer? I think it's going to be Ida. But we'll be back for matches next episode. You guys have a good one. Take care. Bye.